guys and welcome back again to my youtube channel it's a guy v and i am back again with another video i know you guys will be surprised with this video okay finally i have made out time to film a sit down video um guys i don't want you guys to ask me how i was able to do this okay okay guys let me just jump into it okay before the kids wake up you gotta get up gotta get up and make a move so guys yeah welcome to my channel if you are new to this channel my name is ify i'm a mommy youtuber lifestyle vlogger based here in germany wait okay so guys today's video is a story okay story time at the end of this video you are going to find out why i am making this video okay but for now let me just dive into the story because today's story is very juicy grab your popcorn get your juice Get whatever drink that you like and relax okay you are going to hear all the stories and trust me we are going to enjoy it because this thing is something that a lot of women can relate to whether you like it or not whether you want to accept it or not I was a side chick for many years two years I think or even more than so I know that some of you guys can relate to this okay it is not something I'm proud of though okay but it's something that I just want to share here because like I told you guys there's something that prompted um, this video idea I just wanted to share it so that if you are in the same situation you can do something before it is too late okay so back then when I was not married okay I wasn't married when all these things happened I think that was yeah I think after my secondary school there was this guy i was dating then it was actually a long distance relationship because the guy was in lagos while i was based in anambra so after my secondary school i went to see my brother you know this thing that after your final exams a lot of people travel people travel to different places so then i decided to travel to my brother's um house in Kwara state while i was in Kwara state my boyfriend my then boyfriend was in lagos so we were chatting our relationship was based on calls like midnight calls you know that time the midnight call was in vogue so we normally do midnight calls with mtn if you recharge like 100 naira mtn will give you free calls all through the night so we are doing midnight calls then and all of those things now if you know you know so after a year or so something happened that would be a story for another day so we broke up and i was really heartbroken then so i had to leave Kwara state and i traveled to lagos state to stay with one of my aunties note that my boyfriend was in lagos while i was um in Kwara state but then i traveled to lagos again but not the part of lagos where my then boyfriend was i traveled to another part of lagos to stay with my auntie and also to get a job so i got a job in lagos and that was where i met this man in this story the man at the center of this story okay i just gave you guys the background of the story so that you guys the story is not concentrated on my boyfriend it is concentrated on this man now that i just brought in so i met this man in lagos then the man used to come to uh, sorry then the man used to come to a supermarket to buy things and me i worked as a cashier in that company so the man usually comes to us for i get to shop from there he started checking me now you know those things now he started telling me that he likes me and all of those things so and i was really heartbroken when i left para state and um i was not ready to give a relationship another chance i was like no uh, no the man said he liked me i said okay thank you so much for liking me and the man will go the next day he will come back again or sometimes he will not come the next day sometimes it will take like two three days he will come and when he comes after shopping he will ask me to keep the chain what he consign me i'll just carry money put for my pocket because even me at that time i needed money because i was working so i can be able to save enough money to write jam and go to higher institution so one day like that it was my birthday and this man came and i was not on seat so he asked the lady that was there in my place where i was the lady said that i was um i was at home that 
it was my birthday this man called me you know as a cashier because i know that you guys will be asking okay how did he get your number in our supermarket your receipt as a cashier that is seated in that suite your receipt has your name and your information there so the man called me and was like if he, i came to the shop and you are not there where are you i told him that i was home that i was not on seat he said that he knew that i was not going to be on seat but he didn't know that it was my birthday and i did not tell him so i asked him when did we start discussing things like that he said no that at least we've known each other for long at least um, I should have told him that it was my birthday, that I was going to do something. I said, okay, me, I needed money now, forget it, I needed money then. The man will say, okay, just send me your account number. So I just forward, immediately I heard, send me your account number, I just forwarded my account number to this man, and boom, in the next five minutes, I got an alert. I called the man and I told him that, sir, thank you so much, I got an alert. He said, I, you're welcome don't worry don't worry so the next day i came to work and this man was there with some presents and my colleagues were like if it is man that loves you like i like to see like this not love they used like i like to see like this now uh, tell us now what is going on i said i don't know what is going on the man just likes me maybe he likes the way i work there and the way i attend to everybody even though i was suspecting that the man have something else in mind i decided to do as if i don't know what the man they do so um, I think one evening like that the man came I was not on seat but I came to buy something there because anytime I work night I sleep where I work so because of traffic you know Lagos traffic now so I slept there and in the morning no that evening I came downstairs because we have something like a restaurant so I came to that I came down to the restaurant to buy something lo and behold the man was outside and man was like if he I thought that it was him I greeted him and he said if you come now let's see that I've been looking for you I said that I, didn't, I was not on seat that day he said okay that we I should come so that we will talk I said okay that was how I followed this man to his car and he was telling me professing love to me telling me that he likes me so I told him that I was not ready for a relationship but I like him as a person he's a nice person I have not seen anything bad about him he's a nice person but at that moment that was not ready for a relationship the man said okay that will give me all the time that i want but anytime he want me to um accompany him somewhere that i should accompany him i said okay that is not a problem so he said he wasn't going to do anything against my own will i said okay that i trust him so that was how if the man have because he works in chevron if you guys know Chevron, there's this oil company that is called Chevron along that lake here, yeah, best place where that's where the man work. So he will just be um anytime they have let's say occasion or any event or either he has with his friends or in their company, he will go with me. So and I never suspected that this man was married though. And that was how I became a sidekick of this man. So yeah. I follow him to an event sometimes he comes and he take me out in fact i use the man to get over my ex okay so you take me out and you take me to those happening places in lagos so after some months um i accepted to be his girlfriend and yeah but i told him that i wasn't ready for anything ex you know and he said okay that he will give me time that i should take my time i said okay um, after some months, he asked me to get my passport ready that we are going to Dubai, that we should just go there and have some nice time and enjoy ourselves for at least three months. I said, okay. So I was in the process of getting my passport ready. And one day like that, I just asked myself, this man that is doing all of these things for me, does it mean the man does not have like a girlfriend or at least he should have told me something about a girlfriend and ex because i told him about my ex but he did not tell me about his dating life and i didn't bother to ask because me i'm this type of person that like i don't ask people personal questions okay so but that very day my mind was just telling me that this man that is planning to take you to dubai you know you going to dubai with this man and stay there for like three months it means that you and this man are no longer just normal boyfriend and girlfriend that you should ask some questions so that was when i asked the man where are you from he told me that he was from edo and i asked him okay um uh 
you've not told me about any girlfriend ex or does it mean you don't have an ex he said no that he does not have any girlfriend that his exes are already in the past that he has not dated for a long time that he liked me uh, that he saw me and he liked me that's why he approached me that i'm the first person he's dating in a very long time so i said okay no problem so we continued like that oh, until one day I was upstairs because where we work is upstairs and downstairs so I was upstairs and I saw this man I saw him answering call and he was weird the way he was answering the call was really weird that was when I started to suspect something so when he came upstairs he was acting weird I was like is everything okay he said yes that day everything is perfect that I was just coming back from work and he decided to branch um, at the company to give me the things that he bought for me I said okay he handed those things over to me I started suspecting something from that day we continued like that until one day one of our workers approached me and told me that he saw this man dropping off a child um in one school i said what he said yes that he knew the man very well now. so if you see the man that he will recognize him that it was the man that he saw sorry that she saw it was a girl i said okay um that was when my suspicion became very very like glare like I was really convinced that the man was hiding something so I waited till the weekend we hung out that weekend and I decided to ask the man the obvious question I asked him do you have a child he was surprised he was amazed because the way he looked at me I said yeah I just want to find out if you have a child the man said um, yes that he has a child mm hmm that was the first red flag and i asked the man do you have a wife he did not answer yes he did not answer no he was like i am going to explain i said explain i don't understand do you have a wife yes or no he said it was a long story that was when i got angry i said i said which one be long story he said it was a long story that we are going to sit down in private so that he can explain some things to me I said no okay no need of explaining some things to me if there are things that you did not tell me when we started there's no point of you explaining that thing right now because you allowed me to find out by myself which means you wanted to hide that thing from me he said no that I was not planning to hide this that I wanted to tell me but he was waiting for the right time hmm on my side, I took to my heels though. I told the man no, I beg, I know fit. Like it's not me that Lagos madame would break their head and pour acid on. I said no, it's not me. So that was how I left. This man was disturbing me, he was disturbing me. I said no, I beg, I don't want any more. That was how I cut off everything and anything I had to do with that man. Because I've heard stories of women pouring acid on girls because they felt or they saw the girls with their husbands and when i got home that day i was like god what could have happened to me if this man's wife had seen me what could have happened how would i have explained it hey all the while i've been following the man from one event to another what if the woman saw me what if she poured acid on my beautiful face hmm so what prompted this story is because of the trending story of maria big brother niger housemate that was accused by kobana chief priest of dating a married man and people were condemning the girl without even trying to hear from the girl in the chat that were released online maria did not even know that uh, the man was married before you condemn anybody you just have to hear from that person first okay what if the wife of that man had caught me then do you know what could have happened to me and maybe if um, it come out on social media, people will start saying that, oh, this girl is dating a married woman, she wants to snatch her husband. Without even knowing that, I had no idea that this man was married. So that is the story of many girls out there. I'm just trying to tell women because most times it's women that also degrade other women for allegedly dating married men. The married men are the ones that break their relationship or uh, their marital vows. I'm just trying to use this medium to tell everybody to just let us just get our priorities right. A single girl cannot snatch a married man. It's the fault of a married man if a single girl snatched him. Okay? So when you see a married man and a single girl, just know that that married man went after the single girl okay except in the case of maybe they use juju which 
I doubt because if you didn't go close to that single girl, she will not have the opportunity to use Juju on you. Okay, so when you see uh, a married man and a single girl having an affair, you have to do the right thing. Okay, get your priorities right. Focus on the married man that that is disrespecting his wife, the married man that is breaking his marriage vows. Most times, the single girls don't even know that the men are married. And that's just the truth because these men will lie to them. And most of the men, there are some men that doesn't even look like they are married. Okay, so when you see them, you will not even know that they are married. So let us uh, get our, priori our priorities right. It is not always the fault of the single ladies. Sometimes it's the fault of the men. Not even sometimes, most times. It is the fault of the men. Number one, they are the first to approach those single girls for relationship. Secondly, they are the ones that are disrespecting their marriage and their wives. So we should focus on the men. If we start holding them accountable, believe me, the cheating and all those all this kind of news will stop. But because that most times we focus on the women, on the single women, that is why uh they keep on shooting because they know that at the end of the day nobody is going to blame them there is no um no consequences for their actions and yeah it will continue in circles so let us just stop blaming the single women only okay so yeah this is it about this video did you enjoy this video if you did tell me in the comment section thank you so much for watching what lesson did you learn from this video to the single ladies you just have to be very careful if a man, if a man proposed to you or a man asks you out, you need to check the man very well because most of these men, they lie through their teeth. So you just have to be very careful. You just have to be, do your own investigation. Be careful out there before somebody pour you acid for something you don't know anything about. Okay? Tell me your own experience in the comment section because I know that most girls must have gone through this experience maybe once or twice in their lives. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not subscribed and turn on the bell notification. Thank you so much and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye!